Thank you. So uh, I have to move this one because I'm lefty, so it's really hard for me. So I'll be basically talking about the Indian contribution to CMS. So I'm not going to start talking about all the contribution we have made since beginning. So basically focus on few physics results uh, starting in the round two. These are the uh, recent results. And uh, um, then I'll just basically discuss about some of the hardware upgrade we have been participating. Now a little bit about the CMS uh, exp uh, how big the uh, India CMS collaboration is. This is the CMS collaboration about 6,000 people. We are about 160 participants uh, in CMS and there is about uh, 247 institute and uh, we have uh, around uh, 14 institutes from India out of which uh, four are DA institutes and four are the rest are DA institutes. Now the CMS has made uh, enormous uh, progress in uh, getting lots of data about uh, 211 uh, investment one data. This is combined one since uh, 2010. And these are the splitting year wise and the peak luminosity has increased twice as uh, the designed luminosity. And as we get the luminosity or in beam intensity gets higher and higher, the number of interactions or proton proton collision for, for bonds crossing gets increases. And that uh, puts a lot of challenge in the detector hardware and I'll just come back to it later. And now we are collecting data with uh, 13 points, uh, EV center of mass energy. Now, what kind of, uh, so we have about uh, 1170 papers and uh, about 10% of that papers have Indian participations, not like Indian, only Indians have work. It's an uh, Indian uh, collaboration uh, along with uh, other uh, people they have participated. There are some papers only also, only Indian groups have already published, have contributed. And that uh, constitute different uh, areas. We have different uh, physics groups and uh, for example, CMS physics program has hit uh, the vector bosons and top quark, beam agents, UG and other exotics and so on. And that uh, contains a lot of uh, different uh, sub uh, sections of the physics, the detailed physics studies. And uh, the India CMS collaboration participates, participates almost uh, everything, including even heavy ion physics. We, we do take uh, heavy ion uh, data, which I'll come back later and show one or two results from there. Now coming back to, I will show you few from each because as I said, 10% of the papers is too much. I'll show you some of the recent papers using the round two data and only got five, seven or 10 of them and uh, very briefly go through them. And uh, these are, I haven't put the names, but uh, these are the papers which have only contributed by Indian, uh, Indian groups. Uh, well, first, uh, starting with the Higgs boson, we started with uh, still searching mode in early 2012 to uh, observation in uh, middle 2012. And over the time, we have made enormous progress in uh, Higgs, uh, studying the properties of the Higgs, including the couplings and uh, couplings to the third generation. Uh, and then uh, it's a precision mass measurement, uh, which is uh, almost a factor of three, two and a half to three uh, since we started 2012. Now, uh, about the specific uh, physics contributions, uh, the, this is all the results I'll be showing is using the 13 TV data around to that is collected during 2016 to 2018, three years. And this is Higgs 2 BB and, uh, and uh, two photons and uh, where one of the Higgs goes to two BJs and the other Higgs goes to two photons. And that's uh, sensitive to uh, Higgs uh, coupling, self-coupling. And the production mode is basically gluon gluon and uh, HH modes. I mean, uh, even though it's much smaller than the GGH mode, the cross sections. And there are parameters, five parameters controlling these interactions. Uh, and these are the standard model interactions. And there are some parameters which comes from the beyond standard model interactions. And uh, you can see the most of the Higgs, uh, when we do analysis, look at the peak, like you have seen the uh, earlier slide, Higgs to gamma gamma and you don't see any significant, uh, significant uh, signals in the, uh, in, the, in the Higgs mode. And so this is basically one of the two photon invariant mass and the two jet invariant mass, and you don't see any significant, uh, significant uh, excess compared to the data. And uh, so we put the limit on the cross-section times to branching fraction, and that is about uh, less than one, one tenth of one. 
and uh, that is uh, still uh, uh, seven to eight times larger than the standard model predictions. So we have to wait for the for the more and more data. The other one is basically uh, TT bar H and uh, TTH uh, production in the multi lepton channels, uh, where the um, uh, Higgs decays to WW tau tau or GG modes, where the W tau or GG goes to leptonic modes as well as the hadronic tau hadronic modes. Depending on the leptons as well as the number of leptons and number of uh, tau hadrons, you can split the whole uh, topology into 10 subcategories depending on the number of leptons and hadronic tau decays. And uh, uh, again, the uh, signal region is defined based on the lepton and the hadronic uh, tau multiplicity. And, uh, it, uh, and for the uh, um, ET bar H, we just, uh, this is the sig uh, uh, signal strength, which is basically the cross section with respect to the standard model. They are very consistent with the standard model. And uh, here is also, uh, you see uh, not much uh, uh, strength for, this, uh, for these modes. And uh, uh, the, um, you can use them. This is basically very uh, uh, one of the main probes for the top uh, cow coupling. And you can use them for the finding this set of coupling. And uh, that comes out to be either minus 9, 0.9 to minus 0.7 or plus 0.7 to 1.1 at 95% confidence. Level. And that's the definition of the, again, UCAO. this is UCAO top core coupling with respect to what you observe with respect to the standard model. Uh, coming to, uh, again, this is uh, Higgs to WW, and uh, it is the second largest branching fraction of, after Higgs to BB, and this is uh, multi-channel multi modes, and uh, you can see the Higgs going to WW, and they decay to uh, leptonic modes. Uh, so you can look at the, either the uh, same flavor, or you can look at the opposite flavor modes, and uh, they are produced in different, uh, uh, different uh, uh, modes, like uh, GGH, BBF, or uh, VH, where V is W or Z. And uh, uh, it's very difficult to, uh, it's not difficult, it is not, uh, we, we do not uh, reconstruct Higgs mass, but uh, we uh, look at the different variables and uh, fit, the, uh, uh, fit the number of events with respect to the background uh, uh, in your data, uh, in uh, keeping all these three different production mode as a floating parameter. And uh, you get, uh, not only that, you can get all the cross sections in different uh, finer phase space that you see in the different TT beams. And uh, so um, what we saw here is the signal strength with respect to uh, in the different, uh, uh, different production modes. And there again, they're very, very consistent with the standard model predictions within the error bars, uh, one or two sigma within the error bars. And you can measure the standard model coupling parameters like uh, KV and the, uh, the fermion coupling or the vector version coupling with, respect, with uh, top bar, uh, with the Higgs version. And uh, that is uh, consistent with the standard model prediction. And these are the, some uh, finer bean signal strength uh, using the simplified template cross-section framework, which uh, looks at the cross-section in the different uh, phase space, finer phase space. And Higgs to gamma gamma signal strength, he, again, you can look at the different uh, production mode. And uh, again, you simultaneously measure the signal strength in all the four uh, uh, signal channels. And the total uh, signal strength comes out to be 1.12. And uh, these are the different production modes. It's a signal strength and with res respect to the standard model as one. And you see the signal peaks and there, is a, there are um, uh, signals there. And you can again measure the different, uh, uh, the cross sections in the different finer phase space beams. And you can go and uh, find the, all the details, uh, more even uh, finer phase space beams uh, the, the signal strength uh, in, the, in the paper. Okay, so uh, now coming to, uh, so there are plenty of uh, Higgs. Uh, I, I just showed three, four of them, but there are a lot more um, Higgs uh, analysis works going on by India Synex collaborations. Now coming to one results that I, Indian group has uh, uh, contributed is a BS2 mu mu which is basically uh, goes through the uh, loop diagram and uh, any new physics in the loop can uh, change the, change the um, observables, uh, uh, whether it's a lifetime or uh, branching fraction. And uh, the BD with, uh, is much more even suppressed with respect to BS because of the CKM, uh, CKM suppression. And the theoretically, it's, uh, it's a very nice model, both theoretically and experimentally, because it's a much more cleaner. 
and uh, the branching fraction is however very small so you get about uh, three out of a billion uh, ds produced three of them decays to ds decays to mu mu and uh, one out of 10 billion goes to be zero or two and this has been sourced for last 40 years starting in 1984 by clio and uh, till in the in the in 2015, the CMS observed it with uh, five sigma significance. And uh, CMS has published so far about five papers on that, and uh, this result is based on the sixth one, which is already published. And uh, uh, so this is basically uh, using the full run to data, and that's the invariant mass, and that's the, uh, the decay time. And uh, you get both the lifetime as well as the branching fraction from the, the from the two-dimensional fit to the invariant mass and the decay time. And that's the CMS uh, branching fraction for BS to mu mu compared to the standard model prediction here. The error bars is still three times, uh, standard model prediction is three times smaller. And this uh, branching fraction, this uh, errors is mostly dominated by statistics. So we need to wait for the uh, lot more statistics to get down the standard model. To compare the standard model prediction. BS, we don't see any, uh, it's very hard to see BS actually. There is a very tiny peak there. And, um, and we don't see any sig uh, significant signals for the BS. So we put the upper limits on this one, although the standard model prediction is good. The lifetime again, with respect, respect to the standard model, the lifetime is 1.83 times plus minus 0 0.33. And this is one of the single best measurement by any individual experiment out of. Uh, LHC, CMS, or Atlas, even though there is a combined result uh, exists. Okay, uh, now come to uh, another one, uh, supersymmetry. Uh, there are a lot of groups in Indian uh, collaboration working in the supersymmetry. And uh, I will focus on two, three of them. And uh, because I will be showing the similar slides almost all the time, so I want to tell you the general strategy they follow in the supersymmetry so that when I show the same slides, you know what I am talking about. General strategy is basically, uh, if you have a supersymmetric, uh, some, in some uh, observable supersymmetry is dominated, just uh, look at the uh, signal dominated region and we call it uh, the signal region and uh, where we just uh, blind the data here and wait till uh, last minute, we freeze all the procedures here in the um, non-signal region. And then the, after the, all the background estimation method is uh, validated, we just unblind this data. Uh, this is for the one dimensional uh, distribution, but if you have uh, two or three or four dimensional distribution, we even subdivide the signal region from multiple bins. And uh, there is a control region like this, which is dominated by backgrounds. And we try to use that uh, to estimate our background methods and we validate it in some validation region, which is uh, disjoint with signal or control region. And once the validation works out, we just uh, look at the signal region and uh, open the data and compare it with the backgrounds. And if the data is, uh, there is enough excess, then we just uh, try to understand that one. If we don't see enough excess, then in the multidimensional space, we just uh, put that uh, some exclusion plot. And that's what I will just uh, go on showing from now on. And that's one of these uh, beans you can see. I was showing the, three beans earlier, uh, over there, like a uh, signal region one, two, three beans, but uh, there are people who use even 200 of the or 200 beans. So one such thing is basically strong production of gluino and squarks and going to the top quarks. And uh, this is the multi-jet. So all the top going to bottom and W, W going to two jets. And so in the final state, we have a bunch of jets and we turn the missing ET coming from the LSP here. And um, we have about 174 signal search beans in the four dimensional space and they are the 174 signal source bins. And each bin you can see the standard model background which are colored ones with the data points. They are almost uh, uh, very consistent with the background. There is no excess. Those points with excess has very higher uh, statistical error bars. So they are, they are consistent, with, uh, consistent with the standard model backgrounds. So uh, we, if we don't find any uh, significant uh, excess, you can put the uh, we, you can put the um, limit and uh, the limit on the gluino as well as stop mar marks uh, uh, stop quarks as well as the lighter quarks comes up to the around 2.3 2 TeV and it's about 1.2 TeV and this is 1.7 TeV which is basically about 200 to 300 GeV 
greater than the previous results. Uh, similarly, in the other modes of the stop, we have uh, fully hydronic again, the fully hydronic with a better, uh, it's a different, uh, even though it's fully hydronic, it's a different algorithm we use for the top work and the W version tagging algorithm. And we do not see any excess in these things. And we, again, put the exclusion limit on the stop uh, in, the, in both the uh, scenario of stop minus LSP greater than MW or less than MW. And the gluino mass again, it's about 2.3, 2.2 to 2.3 EV. Uh, this is one of the analysis of the boosted uh, G bosons that is, I think we have done for the first time in the CMS. And uh, that is when you have a uh, gluino uh, going to two partial low momentum quarks. And so most of the uh, energy is carried, about, carried by the NLSP. And then uh, with the uh, low mass splitting, and uh, so you get a G boson to be boosted and you get a very wide cone actually for the G boosted G bosons. And again, you look for the six search bins in the PT miss uh, regions, and you can see standard metal background with respect to signals, uh, with respect to the data. And there is a little bit excess, very small excess with large error bars. And you can see if there would have been at the gluing at 1.7 TV, you would have seen about uh, 10 events there instead of uh, about one event there. And, uh, there is enough errors. So you put the exclusion. And again, this is again, uh, I'll just uh, go on in the, of uh, tau decays in the hadronic modes and uh, we do not see, this is the little bit lesser data. Again, we do not see any excess and we put this, uh, this I'll just uh, go on very quickly. And uh, this is another very exotic uh, resonance uh, looking for the excited quarks and uh, radiating the photon and the jets. And you can look at the photon jet invariant mass. And uh, if you see any peak, then you know that there is, a, and the, there is a something there, but we don't see anything. It's, uh, the data is uh, very flat and there is no peak. And based on that, you can look at, um, you can basically put some constraint on the mass of the excited quarks. And the data has gone to up the order of 6 to 6 TV, 6 to 7.5 TV, uh, uh, 6 TV for the excited quarks and our B star about 2.2 TV for a quantum black hole, that's about 7.5 TV. Uh, um, I think this is done by purely by the Indian. And uh, this is multi lepton channels, and I want to skip it looking in the three different uh, heavy, uh, 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 interpreted in three different contexts, and we don't see any signals there. And, uh, and so I just put, uh, let put the upper limits on the, each of these things. Uh, well, the type two, type three C, so these are the heavy fermions there, and you see these are the um, vector like leptons, and this is the lepton quarks between the finals. Uh, final we do heavy ion physics, we take about one month every year uh, during the runtime heavy ions. And one of the things that uh, we have done looking at the femtoscopy, which is basically looking at, if you have basically looking at the particle emitting source region, if you have a particle coming out from the QGP, how big that region is, and uh, that uh, following the femtoscopy tool. And uh, people, uh, for that, you have to look at the same particle emitting from the source. So people do look at the phi pi, pi, pi or KK, but we have looked at the Kesar, Kesar, Lambda, Lambda, which are neutral, neutral particles looking at our uh, sensitivity of the detector, ECMC detector to the, these kind of particles. And uh, this is basically the size of this uh, source uh, as you go to the centrality and that uh, this is a full centrality and that's the uh, low centrality. When you have full centrality, you get the bigger size of the source. And then you can talk about the, whether the uh, force uh, between them when they were in the QGP uh, region, if they were attractive or repulsive based on the, their uh, range, actually the scattering length. Okay, I'll just uh, last uh, six minutes, I will talk about uh, detectors. And um, this is, uh, uh, you have heard from Sapteki, like we need to have uh, with a five times more the luminosity and uh, with a, a huge number of pileup, we need to upgrade our detector to keep up with the intense particles coming out. And, uh, and, uh, and uh, one of these, uh, uh, so we'll be starting with uh, 20, uh, 20, uh, 15, uh, 2025. Uh, it was supposed to be 2025. Now we are moving to 2026 because of the COVID reasons. So now LS shutdown will be 2026 to 2028, three years instead of 2.5 years earlier. And the round four starts at 2029, 29 instead of 2027. 
And there are some detector upgrades happened actually since uh, this uh, last shutdown. There's something going on basically in the end of next year, there'll be some JM also, which is the Indian group are participating, they'll be replaced. Uh, but major detector upgrade will be happening here in most of the detector upgrades. And what we'll be doing is basically, uh, all the left sides is basically replacement of existing system or detector, including the electronics. And uh, these uh, two are basically where will be detector upgrade or replacement, the uh, electronics upgrade or replacement. And the ones that you see in the greens is basically completely new detector that will be installed during the phase two, which is 2025 onwards. And uh, out of that, uh, we, I showed that um, many of these detectors upgrade uh, in the SMS is participating. And one of these basically a level one trigger, this is a trigger um, uh, the, uh, the electronics uh, readout boards. And, uh, and uh, uh, the keeping the bandwidth uh, from 100 to 700 uh, kilohertz to 750 kilohertz, as well as the, the trigger decision making, which will be increased from four, four microsecond to 13 microsecond, within which the trigger should decide whether to keep that uh, in data or not. And uh, uh, not only that, uh, this will accommodate the, the tracker information now, which will be included in the L1 trigger, and the, this is basically. That, uh, this is already fabricated and uh, within Indian companies and uh, fabricated and assembled it will be. And the uh, uh, other one is a tracker. This is the tracker models, you see each of them. And uh, now in the phase two, we'll have a lot more smaller material. You need small material when the tracking particle goes so that they don't get multiple scattering and change their momentum. And you can see this is a, as a function of radiation length. And these colors basically tells you like say how much before inner tracker, within inner tracker, in between inner tracker, outer tracker, and in the outer tracker. Still you see very small material, so that gives us uh, much more precise uh, momentum measurements. And we try to build once uh, about 1100, once uh, such small one. So we want to build 1100 of them in India. And this is how it looks like each of them. And uh, if you expand it, these are the each components you want to Put them together, at, and uh, these two sensors should sit on the top of each other at the micron level precision. And that's what we have built already one of the dummy modules and uh, one of the functional modules that is built uh, in India. And this is very important because of the reasons actually this should be used in the, one of the major uh, role for this detector is basically will be used for the L1 universe track trigger in fact. Uh, uh, the second one is basically educal and uh, specifically the process where, for example, if you look at one of the example is a BBF and uh, BBH, and, uh, and then you can see this Higgs going to gamma gamma, this jet and gamma, they can be very close to each other. And with a lot of pile of environment, you will not be able to see, but uh, this calorimeter has both, are not only they are very precise, but it's a timing information is there. If you put some timing cut there, and you can see that actually they are very, you get the very clean, uh, clean, uh, jet versus uh, uh, photon separation. And uh, there are two parts. One is basically the um, electromagnetic calorimeter and uh, that is uh, uh, CE and the hadronic calorimeter. They are more uh, radiation prone because it's in the forward direction and that's the hadronic one little bit uh, low eta regions. And uh, they will be basically electromagnetic calorimeter will have uh, um, uh, this uh, calorimeter would have a uh, high, um, uh, the uh, silicon sensor based, and this is expanded view. And uh, India is trying to participate on this one. And one of these things is electronics, and you see here, and uh, they are basically assem again assembled and uh, they are fabricated within India and are tested also. And that is one of the things uh, what we have been trying to do. The other one is a muon upgrade. Uh, we have a uh, muon has uh, drip tubes as well as actices and uh, cathode strip chambers. And uh, here in the end cap regions, we have uh, there the gem uh, foils, and uh, we have already contributed in the GE21 here. And, uh, but there is uh, more uh, in the phase two, there'll be ME0, which is basically covering to about the three in the pseudo rapidity regions. And uh, we'll be uh, basically providing the gem detector on this one. And uh, again, within, we, have, uh, uh, we have been working on this since last uh, few years and uh, prepared this uh, gem foils and uh, tested it and assembled it and tested it. This can be used also with different uh, medical imaging purposes. And, um, and uh, yeah. 
Yeah. Uh, this is, uh, uh, I think, uh, um, uh, let me see. So, uh, so this has, uh, um, I believe, uh, the gem is, uh, if you have a very, uh, uh, you can correct me, but if you have a very high radiation, the gem is one of the detector that, uh, so we have three different kind of detectors in different region based on the radiation dose. So if you have a very high radiation dose, there are some detectors uh, you can put in the high radiation dose uh, compartment. Yeah. Actually, not only radiation dose, yeah. it also depends how fast the, uh, the detector is. Yeah. So the, for example, JAM, uh, most JAM and RPC mostly used uh, in trigger much more than the uh, DT and CSC. I mean, they are combined, but uh, depending on its uh, capabilities, yeah. more the Timing response in, of the detector is much faster. I've almost uh, completed. Yeah, it's, uh, uh, there are some physics regions where I just, uh, if you remember, I showed you like, a, uh, yes, yeah. I just uh, showed yeah. you like uh, GE11 uh, and GE21, they're already in place, and uh, ME0. In data is, now in run four, uh, run three, sorry. Yes, sure. Uh, so um, we had actually earlier like uh, muons and uh, and the uh, calorimeter hits uh, in the trigger. Now we are using particle flow as a new algorithm. So most of the uh, detector information will be there. There are some physics uh, regions you can see in the round two how the BS two mu mu and B zero two mu mu looks like, and then the phase two with a detector upgrade how they are separated. It gives a lot of uh, good. Uh, 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 control over our physics output. So I want to summarize it. So we have been uh, uh, working very successfully in the last uh, more than a decade of data run, uh, data taking. And we are participating both in uh, physics analysis as well as hardware. There are also plenty of software. I did not mention plenty of software activity. And uh, uh, the, specifically the detector technology is very challenging. Now we are participating four of them. And uh, next few years, I uh, will have really productive uh, data and uh, we'll just uh, see how the physics comes out. Thank you. Thanks, Shanja, for the detailed talk. And uh, the floor is open for questions. Yeah. Yes, the, the, the BS and BD to mu mu recent result is very impressive. I, I'm wondering how that sensitivity will continue in run three with the uh, increased pileup. Uh, will, will it scale with uh, increased luminosity or, or, or will it uh, oh, well, that, upgrade? That's, uh, with, uh, I think it's a three actoburn data, I guess. That's uh, how it will look like. You are mentioning how it would look. Uh, but I'm wondering about uh, run three initially. Uh, just around three, I think this is three autobahn, but I think, um, yeah, I, uh, let's see. This is around two, and I don't think I have a full round three results yet. Um, yeah, I, I cannot uh, quantitatively comment like uh, how much it would improve. Yeah. Okay. Except all I'm saying is basically the detector upgrade is going to give you better handle on the BS and B0 separation, that is. But exactly how many, I, I think probably you are asking on the B0 significance, probably because big of BS is already observed how much you can go to it. Yeah, yeah. We just hope we can see the B0 with high sigma. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Amal? So you of course showed uh, Indian institutions which are uh, uh, working on uh, making hardware for the upgrade. Are there any industries that are playing a big role in this? Uh, yeah, so there is a uh, specifically electronics. Uh, there are uh, Bangalore has Micropack and Peninsula. They are actually working in the electronics, and uh, the um, the institutes like uh, there are like IIT Madras and other institutes. They are producing the mechanical components with their engineering department. So that's what we are. Oh, no. So say what 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 fraction of the hardware upgrade part? happens in the labs of our institutions, including uh, 
it is you mean assembly assembly everything happens but the, the what for example if you look manufactured at, in some indian no, industry uh, which, uh, yeah I so i can add it's very maybe i can add a few words. you have to go one by one and i can explain you any one by one detector where the industry gets where the outside works one by one but uh, we do have uh, for example the tracking detector the sensors cost a huge amount of money uh, only one company uh, that's uh, hamamatsu in japan they qualify to produce actually and uh, they have to produce they have to give it to everybody in uh, cms but uh, there are some small uh, components that I showed you, like uh, ex exploding few. They can be built in, within India. And uh, but uh, yeah, some of the electronics also we we are actually doing it within India. Yeah, like for this uh, jam detector, uh, some of these uh, large scale uh, the foils. foils. They were made by the Microtech in Bangalore. Those were quality uh, control testing and assembly uh, plant in uh, India. So basically, some technology transferred to. They, they are all micro packed uh, uh, foils, but uh, eventually, I don't think eventually the uh, because of the lack of uh, because of the delay in the funding, probably they will not be able to provide. Yeah, to him. Yeah. So many institutes are participating in it. Yeah. So can I ask, like, globally, like, you know, compared to the full effort of world's effort in putting the EGCAL together, uh, where we are, I mean, how much are we actually... What fraction we are contributing? Yeah. yeah. Okay. And, and what part specifically that we are contributing that... Uh, we are contributing electronics. There was a plan for the doing the module assembly, whole module assembly that you see there, whole module assembly. Still, we are trying our best to, to do it. But uh, I think uh, if Gagan wants to comment something, but uh, mostly we are just uh, approved to do the electronics right now. But what fraction exactly out of uh, the total EGCAL community? Yeah, so if we, I mean, as far as the uh, technical know-how and the competence is concerned, we are there. We have uh, already shown in the so-called mock-up module. And, and, but I think it's the funding is where we are discussing with Sanjay. Uh, so if we are on the game, we will be building 5,000 modules. The total number is 25. So it's, it's 20%. I mean, so, so uh, yeah, so that is the it's number. Uh, one uh, good example is when uh, uh, some of the uh, optical sensors for the uh, calorimeter were replaced, hadron calorimeter were replaced. So we made a, uh, we contributed uh, some uh, crucial components in the electronics uh, from India. Silicon, uh, they were replaced by silicon, these photomultiplier tubes, those calibration and their control boxes were made by the Indian groups, designed and made both. Thank you. In, the end, in the end, we want to grow also. If uh, any institute wants to participate, we welcome them actually to our groups. Thank you. Thank you, Sanjay. And